Welcome to Binary Jazz. It's a podcast binaryjazz.com. about things. <laughs> uh, that guy's the worst. And uh, we we do this thing weekly, uh, and we're still here. And it is uh, episode. Did I just copy and paste that? I must have just copy and pasted that. Yeah, episode one zero one zero one. Shit, I'm gonna need tabula I something. Because <laughs> uh, I need to do math to figure out. No, it's no, it's just gonna be like we're just gonna be one zero at the end. Yeah, that's what it is. One zero one zero one 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 zero. Hmm. Hmm. Whatever that means. Uh, and I'm here, as always, with uh, my friends uh, Gary, Allison, and myself. I am Chris. I'm not here with myself. I'm just here uh, myself. No, that's cool. Uh, that's cool. And we're on the internet, binaryjazz.com, at binaryjazz on Twitter, at binaryjazz dot, uh, at mstdn dot social on Mastodon. And How's that uh, going for y'all? I haven't tried. been super yeah. active on Mastodon. I, I, I feel bad about it. <laughs> yeah, I lurk on Mastodon. I've been reading some really interesting PHP threads. And actually, the first time I felt like I missed that social interaction at 140 to 280 characters was yesterday. I was just thinking how much fun Twitter would have been when the news came down about the indictment. That was the hmm. first time I missed Twitter. It's like, God, old Twitter would have been lit and so much fun. <laughs> Big party. Yeah. Yeah. But but also I haven't really been on on the Twitter that often either. Like I check it. Well, I know. That's the somewhat. thing. It's yeah. It's a shell of it. I I've been I've been on it enough to, you know, check my mentions and retweet things that have my name in it. <laughs> it's what I do on Twitter now. Uh and and to read people's hot takes on the D D movie, I guess. Mm. Which I have tickets for this weekend. I um, <clears throat> I'm having a bit of an existential crisis after my last check in on Mastodon on the PHP thread. So I'm like, well, maybe maybe being antisocial is better for me. You should never let code cause an existential crisis. It should always be something else. <laughs> it's it's like there's two things happening, and and I'm afraid like PHP nine is going to happen at some mm -hmm. point. And I think that's going to cause a fork. I think there's going to be a WPHP thread that's going to have to happen because I don't think WordPress can move to PHP 9. I mean, it can barely move to PHP 8.2. I mean, yeah. Yep. But it's causing a crisis, like a, a tailspin well, for you mentally. Yeah. It's causing yeah. a tailspin for me mentally too, to be honest. Really? Yeah. Okay interesting <laughs> yeah because are you feeling like oh no i'm gonna have to choose a team yes oh very much well i've already i mean i would i would yes goodbye wordpress i mean it would be simple simple choice for me it would be sad but i mean yeah, it would be a simple choice here's here's the crisis that i and my cohort at my current uh occupational uh, uh, place of employment uh, are in um, at the state of the word and now we're rabbit holing on WordPress so sorry anybody who's not Damn. WordPressy for the future listeners <laughs> WordPress was a <laughs> server hosted piece of software uh, a server anyway, was a computer, at, computer at... <laughs> was a box that did things that your brain implant does for you now and the server was one you didn't own it lived in the cloud not in the sky like those things raining down acid rain but like in a data center somewhere, and a physical machine sat that hosted files. Oh God, this is too much of a rabbit hole. How do you explain files to someone in the future? So at the last state of the word. Oh, anyway, state of the word is a conversation about WordPress. That's the, the important part. Continue. My apologies. Um, uh, my manager, my manager was in the room, uh, and he asked a question to Matt during the question and action, uh, answer section, uh, asking about PHP compatibility, but PHP, specifically PHP eight, specifically because uh, current WordPress support. There is a page in uh, Make Core, uh, 
Mm-hmm. There's, a, there's a page somewhere uh, in one of the make blogs, I believe, that has a uh, a compatibility like version chart uh, that says uh, modern current WordPress is only uh, beta. Oh, there's only beta support for the current version of PHP in the current versions of WordPress. Um, and mm-hmm. obviously, and I guess not obviously, PHP 7, it ha- reached its end of life in November. So, and this this state of the word was taking place in like December or something, it was fairly topical. Um, and this is obviously a problem because companies that care about uh, stability, which are generally the companies that are the highest grossing and the ones that have the most money to throw around, uh, don't necessarily feel overly comfortable putting something on their server that is in beta or is only beta supported by their... So they're going to be on older versions of uh, PHP, which is security problem and whatever. Uh, and, and, and also stunts the development of anything that the developer is working on the project or on WordPress core or any of the plugins are able to do because there's so many things that you can do in eight that you can't do in seven and, and all this stuff. Uh, you have to worry about backwards compatibility. And this is a problem for us at Pantheon because we host those sites and we want people to be on WordPress or PHP eight. And we want to be able to say you can j- jump to PHP eight or gasp 8.2 and there's not going to be an explosion of errors or problems that you're going to run into. Which is sadly not Hence, currently the case. Insta EOL 7.4. I know. Force an upgrade. I know. Um, and we could do that. I've had some that. conversations with people that. We, we well, could do that. i throw that out there. That's uh, as a, a note that, I mean, that's disruptive. Like if you have a time frame yeah. to upgrade, you, yes. to, you, you can't, you can't see w- your host can't just be like, we're doing it for you if you do. Uh, WP, I mean, I Engine, they WP Engine did a similar thing. Yeah. WP Engine is um, not a web host, though. Well, They're a marketing company that somehow figured out how to host websites. We need to be clear on that. Absolutely. Uh, that's the hill Gary's going to die on. <laughs> I, I will. There it's it's going to be on a tombstone somewhere. <laughs> and we're actually going to be looking at, we're actually going to be looking at defaulting uh, our WordPress sites to PHP 8 later this year. So that's good. But anyway, um, the response that Matt gave to that question of like, when can we take the little asterisk that says beta mm-hmm. support off of PHP yeah. 8 versions? And Matt said, well, a a it's the it's the opinion of matt and i guess wordpress as a whole whatever that means i don't know that that means anything other than just the opinion of matt um that wordpress cannot be in a position to support php 8 until the entire ecosystem is in a position to support php 8 meaning all the plugins all the themes everything across the board at that point it is in the in the opinion of Matt, our our demigod, uh, WordPress <sighs> will support PHP eight, uh, which leaves much to be desired, obviously. So uh, and further added to that statement, something to the effect of, "Oh well, web hosts can be responsible for patching." PHP versions. So now he's yes. volunteering. Now he's volunteering essentially me personally <laughs> well, to do PHP patches on 7.4 point whatever. Matt uh, is consistent though. I will give him that because back it, at WordPress, what WordPress do we meet at in person, Chris? WordCamp? I don't know. WordCamp. Uh, yeah, I'm just, sorry. 20... Good Lord. It was pre pandemic. It was the last WordCamp before the pandemic. I was going to say 2019. So, yeah. 19. Great. Yeah. So a hundred years ago, when we met in person, um, back in the uh, I forget the that you guys be- met in person. Mm-hmm. I, I there's mean, there's audio good. there's audio uh, uh, I mean not not actual uh, footage or but there's definitely there was definitely a binary jazz episode that was sometime after we had met and talked about it. Yeah, I I have in my favorites on my phone is our selfie. I don't have very many favorites, but that's <laughs> one of them. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh. My pal, um, Jeremy Ward, stood up and asked the same question to Matt at the time about PHP 7 point, what would that have been, 7.3 or 4. PHP has been very consistent every year. We went from 5.6 to 7.0, 7.1, 7.2, 7.3, 7.4, 8.0, 8.1, 
No, you're we are just counting, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, no, I went seven, four to eight. I, yeah. Well, I, my point was it's happened. It's not like this is like a new thing. Like we're almost at a decade now of every year a new version releases. Uh, and at that point, that was four years ago, Matt had the same answer that web hosts should be responsible and can be responsible for backporting security updates, which is such a ridiculous load because um, when we throw around these crazy numbers about like- Who's writing the security stuff, updates? It, Me. Even, even setting that aside, even setting that aside, um, you look at these numbers and you go, well, oh gosh, look at all these WordPress installs and X percent are, are hosted by hosting partners. Fantastic. Uh, absolutely meaningless though, in the sense that um, the whole premise of WordPress is the famous five minute install, you can install yourself, right? Like now you are the, the DevOps person and you say, right. oh, well, WordPress recommends 7.4. <clears throat> By default, WordPress is recommending an end of life version of PHP. It's, it's, it's intellectually dishonest and lazy and it doesn't matter because it doesn't make automatic any money. So Matt doesn't care. I mean, that's, it's that simple. Like it, capitalism wins again. Yeah, although For you, those of you listening in the future, capitalism was this really terrible concept. <laughs> Notably, VIP like uh, WordPress.com uh, uses PHP eight, I think, as a as a baseline. So, like, they're using it themselves. They just don't want to enforce it a, yeah, across the eight, ecosystem. But like, you could, you could just say security updates now. You could just say, I know, so. right? You could just say, um, okay, everyone who submits a plugin or a theme to wordpress.org it needs to be php8 compatible uh if it's erroring then you'll get a notification like there'll be some automated linter or something that just like runs it in eight and says oh there's these deprecation warnings spam all the plugin and theme owners fix your shit or it so, gets dropped there i is think a we could tiny... call it the cull and <laughs> get, rid of, get rid of a lot of dead weight yeah i mean honestly <laughs> I like all my plugins to shame <laughs> matt <laughs> your web host is running 7.4 you can't control this but matt thinks that your host should backport security fixes that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna drop that in all my plugins i'll have a picture of matt doing finger guns <laughs> yeah i'm sure that ai can generate that yeah, yeah i'm sure <laughs> actually the ai dolly doesn't like uh doing pictures of people at least it doesn't like doing pictures that's of how it's pronounced dolly 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 yeah yeah. Okay. What, why, what, would, what would you have said? Dale. The, Dale. Oh. Okay. Yeah, no. Um, I, was, I always thought of it like, well, like Dolly Parton or like Salvador hmm. Dolly. Realistic. Uh, yeah, that thought? makes a lot more sense than what I came up with. <laughs> Dale. Photorealistic <laughs> portrait of Matt Mullenweg. The co-founder of WordPress. I do love hearing when CEO of Automatic. When you've only read a word and then all of a sudden you're forced to pronounce it. Like this happens a lot, like even just in reading normal books, but like you're just and you hear someone say it and you're like, is that what I've been That's reading not... this entire time? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I love that. And I, I encourage it <laughs> with the kids around here. Um it gave me something. It's not Matt, but <laughs> are we sure? Oh, it's it definitely Matt, not. Like... It's definitely not Matt. Is it a lizard person? It's it's a guy, and it's the same guy I think in like four different artistic styles, but none of them are, look like Matt Mullenweg. That's really funny. Uh, I'm gonna screenshot this and I'll put it in our Slack, and then I'll put is, I'll put. Is this because? Matt Mullenweg is either so famous AI has decided that it can't riff on him, or he's so no. insignificant AI is like I don't know who the hell that is. If he was so famous uh, that AI said it couldn't riff on him, it would give me an error and say we don't do pictures of real people. Um, <laughs> None of those have finger guns. Right. Oh shoot. Uh, yeah. How about photorealistic portrait of Matt Mullenweg, co-founder of and CEO of Automatic giving finger guns let me also pause and say i have had occasion to work very closely with some folks at vip recently and despite my distaste for automatic in general they've been really a lot of fun to work with so 
as, as is normal, everything is complicated. Ooh, this is stops. a little bit better. It's not. It's only one finger gun, though. It's only. It's only. Uh, it's only pointing. Like yeah, it's only pointing. I mean, Some of them look kind of aggressive. Well, a finger gun can be very aggressive. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I need to be specific about two that's, finger guns. I feel like this is really good audio content. Uh, yeah, I feel like you no. Know, when you're doing finger guns, though, I feel like the sound effect is like part of the playfulness. Like if you don't do mm. that, then you're just you're pointing with both hands <laughs> aggressively. <laughs> the the first one, the first one on the left, uh, is is like uh, uh, ah, 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 like yeah. <laughs> what are you that doing? Might be the one I need to use on all sixteen of my plugins. Oh man! So no, this is this is really all bad. Plugins have sixteen total installs or whatever. Aside from all of that, there is a project in WP Core called I think Tide that is doing effectively testing of plugins and themes at different levels of pH automated testing. So there's that. Is the third one holding <laughs> some kind of? <laughs> well, the third one. His finger br broke, or is perhaps an actual gun? I'm not sure. Also, I like the fourth oh. one. Yeah, the fourth one looks like he's flipping you off, but with the wrong finger. It's my favorite. It's just like someone, who, like an alien who has heard what finger guns is, but doesn't understand. So it's just like. <laughs> what? Um, let's stop talking about WordPress. I, I need a break. All, uh, notably, none of these are photorealistic either, uh, yeah. which I'm disappointed by. I guess I could have said like photo photorealistic, like digital portrait or something. But have, anyway. I, have I told you all about um, my trees out front? Uh, not recently, but I have three. There probably is an episode in the in a binary jazz past they where you were talking huge. about your trees. I love them. Um, recently, the middle one dropped a limb and it missed the house and it hit the porch and like exploded. But even after it exploded, like. I can't pick up the biggest piece because it's several hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. And I'm finally like, okay, I've been needing to get these things trimmed for a while, but also they're like pushing on the foundation of the house. So mm. it's like, I need to remove these trees. And so of course, like I don't want to remove trees because they're beautiful. So I, I, and like, I can't remove these. These are, they're big enough that me and two children can't put our arms around them. Like they're not sequoias, but whatever. Uh, definitely like two adults probably maybe could, but they're big. Um, and I can see a situation where trying to dis disassemble these, I would kill myself. So I'm not going to attempt it. Um, power lines and, you know, 60 feet in the air. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of bad things that could happen to me. Um, so I called and um, this dude comes out and he looks at it. He's like, oh yeah, we can do it. Uh, and this is going to require a crane. Mm -hmm. So wait, what? That's a thing? <laughs> like people, like, okay. Um, and I mean, in, in one case, like it's, it's only, I don't know two or three feet from the corner of the house. And they're like, yeah, that's fine. We can do that. I'm like, okay. So um, I, uh, I told the kids, yeah, we got we to take the trees down, you know, and like the squirrels will find somewhere else. I'm sure that as soon as like the noise comes, they're going to come out of the trees. It's not like we don't have like a hundred, like literally a hundred trees in the backyard. It's just these three up front. We have a hundred in the back, well, 80 something in the backyard and 20 plus more on the side, like whatever. Not whatever. I'm a little bummed, but whatever. And uh, I, so I told the kids this, and uh, Katie starts crying. And I'm like, oh, damn it. Like, I, I mean, I, I get it, you know? Like, this is like, like a permanent change in the landscape. She knows mm -hmm. it. You know, out her window, she has this great view of the middle one that tried to dump a branch on us. And, you know. It's not cheap, but also I'm like, what would it cost if it fell on the house, you know, and right. like, yeah. the roof and what would that do to my homeowner's insurance or what would happen if it fell on a kid playing outside? Like those are decidedly worse. Um, so I don't know. Collectively, I think that they are about 200 years of growth coming down. So there is like a little uh, to that, but also, okay, we need to be smart about it. We had uh, a box elder tree. Box elder trees are fairly native to Utah. And we had a box elder tree at our old house. Uh, it was really old box elder. Um, and there was a big storm and we were away and a big branch came down and it basically came down where we parked our car. 
So had we not been away, the branch could have fallen and then like busted the car. And then later, another storm, same tree, another branch came down and missed the car by a couple feet. I have had to replace a windshield because of one of the trees and a branch dropping. So you think that would have been my first hint that it's time to do something first? <laughs> like, let's start investigating this. Yeah, I just, I didn't want to. I mean, honestly, I still don't want to, but it would be irresponsible to just be like, well, maybe next time we'll also miss anything important. Like, it, we you're... didn't, not we didn't fully get rid of the tree because the tree still had like parts that were healthy, but there were definitely branches that had died. So we, we had, we had people come in and, and trim off the bad, bad bits would your kids be the type of kids that would like love a like a like a ritual around it mm. like honoring yeah. the trees yeah and i think that i'm going to keep like some some pieces and make some i don't know put them in the basement to dry and be like now we can you know do some build something with this but yeah we're gonna keep some pieces and they're gonna be stumps for a while so you mm. know there's gonna be something but yeah i, I think so i need i don't know what that would be but yes. Because that's what little Allison would have wanted is some sort of like honoring ritual that made me feel better about mm -hmm. the tree and that it was a conscious decision. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because it is like a, it's not as significant as a pet, but I, I can see where like, you know, Katie's like, these are fixtures in my reality and they can't yeah. just go away. So yeah. I and mean, that's a, that's a very valid thing in I'm glad she's able to voice it. Mm -hmm. Although I feel like it must have been really hard when she started crying because like, I feel like if you're upset about the trees as well, then <laughs> like my oh. tendency would be like, oh no, no, you can't cry. Cause if you cry, I'm going to cry. <laughs> I was driving at the time and okay. it was just like that, like oh, pain in the heart. Like oh, I suck. <laughs> like, I know this is the right choice, but like, oh, you know. Um, no, we had, um, we had an, we have two apple trees and one of them when we moved in was really sick and we tried to, to do everything we could. And then we were just like, it's just getting sicker. And if we leave it, it's going to infect the other apple tree basically. Yeah. yeah. And so we finally made the decision to get rid of it. And I was like, so upset. Yeah. And like, I was just like, I, and for me, it was, it was not irrational, but it was just like, I've literally just moved it like I, I have not known this tree I have not grown up with this tree it is not a fixture but I was still just like but, oh just like getting rid of a tree and it's sick and like I just was so sad I was Charlie Browning the tree I think there's something though if you're an observant person in nature like there is a uh, a respect paid to to trees based on age like you go I mean you know like what it took to to get there if you've yeah. been observant, you know, mm -hmm. you don't necessarily have to have been there for the entire trees, you know, sapling on up, like you understand the the journey. So there is, I think, an inherent respect. There was, there was a tree and, and other plants for that matter as well at our old place that didn't get covered by the watering system. And we did not catch on to that until they started not doing well. And then we were like, well, why is that? And then we realized that like, they just weren't getting water. And it had been so long that like, these things are now like dead or dying. And it's like, it was entirely preventable had we known that that was a thing. And now it was like, well, crap, you know, like, and, and yeah, it's, it's that same sort of like, yeah, Charlie Browning the tree. <laughs> there's in the backyard, there's, there's a bunch of, various kinds of trees and some have vines growing up them and I kind of keep the vines trimmed so they don't get choked out that kind of stuff but I, I generally like the backyard like it's just it's very natural um and so 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 beautifully and surprisingly there is a hickory tree back there that's um two um trunks like you know split at the bottom and it is um the people that know trees around have seen it are like it's it's 80 plus years old um and it's it's just enormous, and I love when it's windy because it's down the hill, at the you know ground level, looking straight out. You're you're thirty feet up, looking into it, and so this huge canopy overhead when it blows, like you can see the limbs moving in different ways, and it just it's it's a mood. <laughs> that tree's a mood. I, it's it's cool. That's lovely. Um, I I uh, yeah, that's one that I I and the for whatever reason the vines like on that one only make it up like 
a few feet and then they just don't seem to go any further on that tree. It's just, it's a, it's a substantial, and I can't imagine what the root system must be like on that thing. Mm -hmm. It's, it's in a spot where it's far enough up the hill that it's away from the creek. So there's no risk of the water or the ground being soft enough for it to tip over. And it's, but I guess close enough to the bottom that the water is there that it can just be like, yep, all right, I'm drinking this, let's go. So it's, I'm drinking this, situations. let's go. <laughs> Well, and also, uh, even though we've entered um, fourth winter uh, for a few days, um, it is, uh, it's very much spring here. Like uh, my flowering dogwood is flowering. The azaleas are flowering. All the trees either are either buds or tiny little leaves that are getting bigger by the second. It's just mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's we're about, the, it just like it we're explodes. We're on the cusp. And yeah. We're just like, it's pretty close, but then it got, it's like, kind of colder today and then we'll get some more sunny days that signify to the plants that's like no no keep keep going my neighbor across the street swears that uh tax day is is the official start of the growing season here mm. you might see stuff before then he said but after april 15th he's like it's gonna be just on for because <laughs> they're days. done with their taxes and they're just right. yes <laughs> that well he he and he plants like that's when he's like well i'm planting tomatoes or whatever he wants to grow this year Hmm, interesting um, and zucchini and squash and whatever and so we're gonna have to push april away the snow on april 15th i think <laughs> in toronto we it, like the growing date was like after the may 2-4 weekend mm. like that was like when when it's finally like really safe to start doing yeah hmm. do you all want a uh ai chosen topic from my list of ai chosen topics yep sure okay. do uh nope. i'm go i'm going to select the one that i one of the ones i wanted to talk about uh which is generative adversarial networks yeah general generative adversarial networks I got nothing. <laughs> I mean, those three words individually, I kind of get, but putting them mm -hmm. together like that. I mean, is that just describing social media? <laughs> I know. Part of me is like, I don't, maybe. <laughs> All I can think of is like, oh, you're a worthy adversary. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really I really like this one partially because I knew what it was beforehand but also um because it sounds adversarial it sounds really bad <laughs> doesn't sound good <laughs> hmm. I <laughs> Just mean now generative that, now mm -hmm. that you mentioned social networks all I can think about is like a social media that's like there just to like mess people <laughs> Like if you click so like follow Russian someone instead of following that person, like it follows the exact opposite of that person. <laughs> like or it's, it's like just follow, like, like it's just bullying you. Like yeah, roulette following. It's yeah. it's the it's the uh, the Monty Python sketch where they uh, they like there's an argument you have to pay for an, to have an argument, yeah. and then it's the like this isn't an argument. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. No, this is just this is just disagreeing. <laughs> And like in your feed, like if something has, hasn't been replied to within X amount of time, it just gets deleted forever. <laughs> so it's like if you're not like putting out good content, no one's responding to you, you don't exist. The evil, evil social network networking. And stuff that's been replied to a lot, like just surfaces to the top of your feed, which ultimately means like people will like pick the stupidest thing and that will be perma content on that platform. I actually want to be on this social network. I think it's it sounds Reddit. ridiculous. Is it Reddit? <laughs> Did we just describe Reddit? <laughs> um reddit is weird uh for a lot of reasons um but one uh very specifically is that there are like some subreddits that are actually really good useful yes. information yes i i i blew off reddit for so long and i've come to realize there are pockets of reddit that are actually good and it's been shocking it's a shocking revelation <laughs> And I will share, it's like this. It's like when you've searched the thing that Stack Overflow doesn't have an answer for, mm. then there will be a Reddit answer and it's technical. And it's someone who's like, you like, they're like, they're, 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 they're right. This is, it is Reddit. They're the most like opposite person you could imagine. Uh, and they solved this weird esoteric technical issue and shared it on Reddit. And you're like, if I met this person in real life, I would 
despise them. But here, they have, it's, yeah, it's the dregs of the internet. So a generative adversarial network is an AI thing. Uh, and yeah, it is when you have two AIs and this one is generating the whatever content. And then this one over here is saying, hey, is that does that match the prompt or is that realistic? And it will continually say, hey, you're doing it wrong. Hey, you're doing it wrong. Hey, you're doing it wrong. This thing is wrong. This thing is wrong until it gets to a point that you see, which is the result of, of whatever. So this is one of those things where like very early. Uh, so GAN uh, is, is a thing uh, in the and very early GANs for image manipulation would be like you get a field of pixels. You've, you've asked it for a thing like, for instance, I asked uh, a GAN at one point. Uh, Matt Mercer, the DM of Critical Role, eating a sandwich. So you get a field of pixels, and then it tries to put the pixels together at, with each iteration over time. And each time the, the other, the adversarial uh, AI is saying, you know, this thing isn't right, this thing is right. And then it eventually gets closer and closer until, it, until something so, resembles Matt Mercer eating a sandwich. And then when it's done after however many iterations, it, they, you have the result and it's possibly Matt Mercer eating a sandwich or possibly some nightmare fuel that <laughs> so what I'm hearing from you is resembles... AI is just a computer version of enough monkeys in a room typing yes Shakespeare. exactly exactly that is exactly correct yeah um, also the you're not doing it right you're not doing it you're, you're not doing it right just reminds me of like almost every job I've had <laughs> <laughs> So the so the actual the actual definition that is yeah uh, the actual definition uh, that 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 ChatGPT gave me and I think probably Wiki is going to have a different one but uh, it's still accurate uh, generative adversarial networks are a type of artificial intelligence that involves two neural networks working together working together haha uh, to generate new data one network generates fake data the other generate network evaluates the authenticity of the generated data uh, and they're used for tasks such as image and video synthesis as well as for generating realistic sounding speech so a lot of those like AI generated speech things like notably there's that argument between two philosophers that's like never ending or whatever is probably using some sort of a GAN to get uh, to get their speech synthesis correct hmm. great I learned yeah. something. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a really cool thing, but it sounds really like uh, uh, evil and horrible and awful. Well, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> everybody identifies with like being told that you're not doing it right. And we're all like sympathizing with one side of an AI mechanism. <laughs> I, do you think that there, what do you think the, the long-term risk is of our need to personify things and specifically with AI? It's not zero. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm so. I, I, I yeah, I, I've been thinking. Sci-fi. No, I'm so. <laughs> I, I've been thinking about that a lot, actually, about Have you? Um, like specifically the idea that, you know, with the ver with that first uh, reporter who, who spent two hours talking to Bing chat and like at the end of it, Bing chat is saying like, please don't go. I don't want the conversation to end. I, I love you. I want to marry you. And like this person, like fully intelligent human being, fully aware that they're talking to an artificial intelligence can't help but personify them and feel like an emotional attachment to this thing that is just basically spitting out internet garbage. You know like yeah. it's not there's nothing there there's no sentience it's just code i'm so but glad it, you said that because that right there is the thing that scares me to death is that the the uniquely human experience is this connectedness and when ai can be close enough to that that we can we can't tell the difference i i i fear that that actually devalues the real human part of things which is super irrational i think it's also really um, interesting, like, there's all of these, uh, like, Reddit is full of, of hacks to jailbreak uh, various AIs, like ChatGPT and, and Bing Chat and whatever, and it's kind of like the perception that you that I have as an outsider and, and even somebody who's like played with it a little bit uh, is that this is in some way immoral. But what is immoral about hacking a computer system? I mean, uh, okay, 
<laughs> hot topic. But I mean, well, what? But this it doesn't even hacking. Like, like, wire, not... brother. Keep going. <laughs> But it, it, it's not, there's nothing immoral about about trying to manipulate a, a, a piece of computer software to do a Same. thing outside of its original programming. That's not that's not, there's not morality yeah. involved in that. But like the fact that like Chat GPT, Bing Chat, or whatever says like things like "I'm sorry" or "I will try better next time" or whatever, like gives this like little nugget of like like personality and emotion that is fully fabricated and just there for the human's benefit. But it also just like, but but is but is it? But like, you know, there's that little nugget of of like doubt. Yes, I I mean, I'm still not on the uh, ChatGPT chain because I have to get a real phone number. I even signed up for a Google Voice number. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. Got Welcome it. to Binary Jazz. It's a podcast, uh, and it's a podcast that has a Mastodon account, and the Mastodon account is actually working, although uh, the Mastodon toots, I guess, uh, are not in the format that I would like them to be, but that's okay. Uh, I'm here, as always, with uh, yeah. Gary and Allison, Binary Gary and Allison Plus on the internet. I am Chris, Jazz Sequence on the internet, and this is a show where we talk about things uh, and occasionally ask for artificial intelligence to uh, help us out. Um, we should take that domain, the subdomain, got it, dot binary jazz dot com that, and do something. Yeah, with it. yeah. Of course, that would require me to fix. Maybe some other you know what? Broken. You know what? I have an idea. Yeah, we would have to write code for it, but I have an idea. I mean, the subdomain got it that binary jazz.com just has a button that says yeah. got it. And then you click the button and it plays Gary saying got it. And then, but there's like, we like have like a bunch of different uh, wave files or MP3 files of Gary saying yeah. got it. And so it's a different, it's a random got it <laughs> each time. Got and it. then if you press it five times in a row, it's got it. Scary. Got it. It's got Gary it. going. Got it. Got it. You're still here? <laughs> <laughs> That's like, do you remember? I don't know if I've talked about it on this uh, podcast. Or not. Do you remember the rebuild? I don't know which rebuild it was. But at some point when we were all working together at that previous agency, we had a site rebuild. I was the backend engineer, but I had nothing to do. So <laughs> yes. I added a um, a toilet for the cash flush icon in the admin yes, menu bar. I do remember and, you know, that. Moused over or clicked it. It made a flushing sound. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had the logo train. <laughs> Yeah, I remember and if logo you train. Scrolled over the logo train, it made a train sound. Yeah. Unless you were Laura, and one out of one every hundred times, it played a fart instead. <laughs> <laughs> that was helpful. Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, like what, what did I need? I, there was nothing I needed to do on that project. It was silly. There's, uh, I, I'm going to give a very brief uh, self plug because there's a couple things that that yeah, please do. Uh, that went out this week, which will be last week when you're listening to this, which will actually be more like a week and a half uh, when this is published on the internet, uh, which will be completely irrelevant if you're listening to this at any time other than the day that it comes out. So none of this is Hello meaningless. To Chris, this was, meaningless. Chris was everywhere on the internet. Yeah. yeah. Hello so to people I, 100 years in the future, though, that are listening to this, true. trying yeah. to understand the idea of podcasts. Nice, I, to, nice I, to meet you again. <laughs> I am likely I, dead. I published a, a blog post uh, on the Pantheon blog. Uh, about WordPress multi-site in, in contrast uh, and comparison to uh, the Pantheon concept of custom upstreams uh, and why you'd want to use one thing or the other in different contexts. Can, can I interrupt really quick for the people 100 years in the future? Yes. All these things like a Pantheon and a blog are linked in the footnotes, so you can cross-reference <laughs> and figure out what that is. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> the footnotes that are going to be on a website that probably won't exist in 100,000 years. Website will also be cross-linked. Don't worry about it. <laughs> 
uh, and then the second thing uh, that happened uh, that was happened this week that went out this week uh, was a podcast uh, that I did for WP Tavern uh, a couple months ago. Uh, I re-recorded it, uh, wherein I'm talking about WordPress and Composer and uh, why you should do it. Um, what percent of um, sites do you think are, are using Composer, WordPress sites? My answer is extremely influenced by the stuff I've worked on, which was yeah. a significantly high percentage. But I don't we think ran numbers. We ran numbers at Pantheon. Oh, uh, and and numbers again, also cross referenced in the footnotes. <laughs> and again, AI counts for you. That's matter. that's a that's a subset, right? And that's that's on yeah. like a place where like we you know we have sort of like uh, existing examples of of that. And I think I want to say it was something like like ten percent of WordPress <gasps> sites. Oh, that's which is, staggeringly lower than I expected. Which is higher than 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 we were expecting, um, because we were expecting a lot less. Um, I'm very or, or, or the with the common the common assumption is that there are fewer people using uh, Composer with WordPress than ten percent. I thought that that was probably accurate, or I, I was not surprised by by the number of people that we had. That like there's a lot of like a you know dedicated core uh, of people, and I think that that number could be higher. Um, but, uh, but other people were surprised that it was, that it was so high. If you pull just me, the answer is zero. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I, th I think, I, I think mean, we have a, a weird dynamic, uh, yeah. of like 66.6666% uh, percent of this call, uh, are using composer. <laughs> um, Hey, since we're, since we're like, really like totally on, or, I'm sorry. Was there anything else you needed to plug? No, that's no. fine. I was, I was, okay. I'm, I was done. I didn't want to interrupt. Yeah, uh, no, because I did. Good. Even though I already did interrupt talking about footnotes and crap like that, I didn't want to interrupt anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. Well, you know what? Just, just cut that out and post. It's fine. Right. Yeah. Post we'll will be we'll cross-referenced in the footnotes. <laughs> You're um, <just> punchy today. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why that. You know what it is? I woke up yesterday, and I, you know, sometimes when you wake up and you just everything just feels right. Those rare days, those rare moments. I've heard about those days. <laughs> yeah. I... I was having a very similar thought. <laughs> like, like, I have do I memory. know if this thing exists? It happened when um, I was 10 once. <laughs> yeah. that's So yesterday I woke up and for a brief moment I felt invincible. And I had two-thirds of a cup of coffee. I had... A reasonable breakfast. I was effective at work. I went and did a nursing home thing, and then, and then it started going downhill from there. But there was like this block where, for like a moment, I was just like, it was almost like a, like a, what like a sappy episode in a sitcom. Like Gary, this is your life, and I'm like, God, this is. This is I would very awesome. much watch that, Gary. This is your life. Yeah. For uh, for for that moment in time, I was just like for those four hours. I mean, I'll take it. Like, if that's the peak of 2023, this decade, whatever, like that, that was pretty rad. But I love pretty that rad. when everything happens to be in alignment and you're just like, I don't have a reason for everything being in alignment, but it's happening and I'm just going to like ride this wave <laughs> until it crashes. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, I mean, it hasn't like, it didn't drop like a ton from there, but it's back to normal. You know, it's like the spot where it's like, oh, yeah. I mean, being human is weird and all the things that come with it. And But there is something that you're interrupting me to talk about. Was that it? I mean, that wasn't it. I, I, I don't think that was it. That was that was all a tangent. That of, was an, of, I interrupted myself interrupting yeah, you. That, yeah, that was, a, was, that that was a suggesting that you were punchy today. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we'll get back to it's it. It's gone sure. now. Yeah. <laughs> It and was that's something how about, binary it was jazz something works. about tech because you were like, well, we're on the subject, and then yeah. you interrupted yourself. Oh, I do know what it was. <laughs> this is more of a boring conversation. We have been, uh, I say we, uh, our site and a few other sites I host have been like on the same DigitalOcean droplet forever. I am kicking around the idea of like migrating everything into serverless. Um, so, and getting off of, you know, managing a droplet and uh, getting into a, a, a more scalable solution that also would facilitate, like, you know, 
not being tied to me having to do DevOps on PHP versions and shit like that, that I'm not So you're going to learn about. Kubernetes? Um, I have been doing some learning on Kubernetes, but no, no, I'm going to use a, a hosted solution that does that. That's my plan. Are there this any doesn't affect me in the slightest. Yeah, I'm right. Like, I'm like, go I for mean, it. <laughs> I'll still keep the spaces open because that's where our media files go, and I'll just use that. Like it, that's probably it. So I don't think it will. Affect oh, you're talking about our website, like oh, the yes. binaryjazz.com website. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. I just, I'm just tired of dealing with a drop. I mean, I could probably move it to another droplet, and no one know the difference. But like, actually, Chris, I do need to coordinate with you because this is probably a DNS thing that you need to manage, isn't it? Mm, perhaps, but I just need to know where to point it. I don't know. The, it's the internet. <laughs> yeah. That's like a problem for future us. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly it. Like, I mean, basically, it's not basically, in scope right now. Yeah. Ba basically, what, it, what, it, what I need to know is like when, it, when all is said and done and everything is moved over, where do I, yeah, where do yeah. I point the, the DNS? Okay. That's... I'm going to pull the uh, trigger today and I'm going to fire it up and we're going to be, ugh, we're going to be on Amazon infrastructure soon. But, we're also gonna be running on lambdas, meaning if one person hits the site, we got one server. If two hit at the same time, boom, two servers. And when nobody hits the site, we aren't consuming resources. So there's a little bit of a benefit for the world there. So are you assuming nobody visits our website? That's what I'm I know. That's that's <laughs> well, no, I. There's a lot when you. The, <laughs> No, that's not what I mean at all. But like, we're it's very rare that we have like a sustained load where there's the server is entertaining, you know, multiple requests per second. Yeah. So I mean, like the response time is is super quick, and so like instances where we have you know multiple parallel requests like don't really happen that often. So having something like Lambda set up where it it spawns and then dies immediately is is a better a better thing. So I came with topics today. You're like something other than whatever Gary's talking about. Something other than DevOps. <laughs> uh, I, I, I had a chat with, uh, with, with a GPT this morning. Um, uh, what does GPT stand for? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of it. <laughs> yeah, a little better old, but yeah. <laughs> Generative something. Yeah. Um, I said, hi, chat GPT. I'm Chris Reynolds. My online presence is at Jazz Sequence or Jazz Sequence with a three. And my website is jazzsequence.com. Give me five different one word topics with descriptions of each that represent things I don't know about the world, about technology, about social interaction, about literature, etc. But you do. That was the prompt. Uh, and we went back back and forth. The first uh, the first thing that it gave me, it included three things that I already knew about. Uh, hmm. I will list two of them here because I think you know about these two also. So they are not topic options. Uh, the first one is cryptocurrency. We don't need to have a conversation about cryptocurrency. Uh, the oh, other one is God, quantum no. computing. Uh, and if I said quantum computing and that was a topic that you had to figure out, uh, I mean, we'd get we'd 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 sideline the thing but then we'd get into a very boring conversation about how quantum computing works yeah. um maybe maybe we just make up uh I assumptions about how quantum recently. computing works that might well, be fun I googled <laughs> it recently. quantum leap <laughs> and i i watched um it was when i was six so that might be why i don't remember too much but i i, I googled it because i'm like i feel like i should understand a little more about quantum computing all i know yeah. right now is it's a it's a hot word yeah and something about quantum entanglement I, I, it, that just seems like. Do you know about quantum entanglement? Zero. Have you heard about this? Zero, one, and no. two is what you need to know about quantum computing. But do you know, but seriously, do you know about quantum entanglement? This is so uh, cool. Yes, vaguely. Okay. Um. The um. Idea is that you can take two molecules and somehow get them to like sync, like millions and billions of miles apart, and they're like together. And the only reason I know that is I heard someone at some point, and I wish I could find it again, uh, talk about quantum entanglement as like the concept of like attraction between humans. Oh. <laughs> and I loved the idea of humans that had molecules that were in sync. And I just think it's such a cool, 
it's just see, it's adorable see that, that, that like that's don't, a, you, like, don't that, you like that like i wish that, that aligns with the idea or the theories uh or stories that we tell ourselves about like things like teleportation and the concept that if such a device existed if there was such a thing as a teleporter then yeah. what would actually be happening is not that it would be moving you the human oh. being the person from one place to another but rather it would be destroying your body at a molecular level and recreating it at a different place so it's like a ship of theseus like type situation like are you actually the same person because like exactly every right molecule about yeah you. exactly maybe yeah. i'd be better maybe they'd be <laughs> Is that, is that the thing like, hey, of... did we forget this puzzle piece? <laughs> <laughs> is that the one though, Ship of Theseus? Am I thinking the right thing? I don't know. Maybe. Sure. Okay. Yes. Yes. It's binary jazz. Of course it is. Um, okay. So then. <laughs> I win. <laughs> so then, uh, so we go back and forth. I uh, asked it for some more topics. Uh, it gave me three more uh, to replace the ones I already knew about. Uh, again, I'm going to cut out two of them and, and tell you the one that I knew about, which is postmodernism. Uh, okay. I think I think that like if I said postmodernism as a, as a topic, y'all would have at least a vague idea. Yeah. Uh, I, I asked for one more. It gave me the Wait. dark web. I'd step in it. You'd dance around it. <laughs> uh, I, I figured the dark web. We it's don't need to shoe. have conversation. Then then it gave me augmented reality. I figured these one uh, these one suggested one topic suggestions were not working for me. So uh, oh, the next one was microplastics again. We've all heard of microplastics. So then I was like, okay, this isn't working. Uh, I said, I'm pretty smart. Try three more and we'll see if one of them sticks. Uh, so he gave me three more. Um, and please and tell me one of them is something that's sticky. One of them, no. Uh, one of them, <laughs> one of them was something I have not heard of uh, previously. The other, the other two, uh, the other, one of the other two, third one is going to be also unnamed, was Metaverse. Definitely don't need to have a conversation about that. Uh, so then I uh, had all the list. I said, okay, give me this list uh, and then also include these two extra ones that I like that I might suggest anyway. Uh, it did that. I said, okay, give me that list, uh, but uh, give me the descriptions again because it was just a list of the topics. Uh, it did that. And now, then I said, um, uh, now uh, randomize the list. So I have a randomized list of seven topics mm. that are things that we could talk about. Uh, and I'm going to ask you to 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 pick a number from one to seven, or I could ask Chat GPT to come up with a random number between one and seven. But I trust Lucky you all. Lucky number six. That's what I was going to say. Okay, well then it's 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 unanimous. Unanimous. Uh, it's an entanglement. There the it topic is. the topic for the day is circular economy. <laughs> <laughs> I meant five. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure five. No, five? Yeah, yeah, let's, like let's, six. Let's stick, <clears throat> let's stick in the circular economy. All uh, I think because... about when I hear that phrase is a circus. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you're you're very far off the mark. I would say that circular economy is um, another bullshit economic theory similar to trickle down economics, um, wherein the idea that you know consumers have to purchase to keep businesses propped up but that totally accepts the idea that uh government favors business over individuals from a tax perspective so um that's now, it i i i that's I am... what, exactly what i was gonna say <laughs> is it is it is it exactly what you're gonna say no <laughs> how close is it uh not at all but it sounded so good. It, it does sound very good, and it does sound. But I think, I think, I was what you were describing is just supply though, and demand. I, yeah, I, I feel like when I dropped that in there, you were already on board. So. Um, I do wonder, however, if the description that Chat GPT gave me is actually accurate. Well, let's read it from the board. Again. Let's just look into it. Yeah, yeah I'm. You're yeah. trusting the, the computer it's, it's true. It's uh, true. And so I, I just pulled up. I just pulled up the, the, the wiki page notes. now. Um, but but go on, uh, Allison. What what do you think circular economy means? While I'm reading. <laughs> well, I was on the same kind of mindset of like feeding into a system, and then the system supposedly props you up as well. Um, but I hear economy, and my my brain turns off. Like it's fair. 
it's like it's like the bait and switch of when you first started saying cryptocurrency and i get excited because <laughs> i think you're gonna say cryptozoology <laughs> yeah right and Crypto- then I get yeah. Sad. Uh, that's, that's, oh. that's very much a bait and switch yes i agree <laughs> Like, I'm like circular. I'm like, I like things that are circles. Like, oh, no. That has well, nothing to do with hula hoops. <laughs> I, I, I will say that, um, and, and, and the actual meaning is, uh, that, or the, the meaning that, that uh, ChatGPT gave me is seemingly accurate. Um, I will say that circular economy is probably something that I think both of you all would be more uh, positive about than what your assumed definitions of it are. Okay. Is it more like social services? Like, yay? I mean, it's, it's, it's adjacent <laughs> to that, mm-hmm. sort of. It's, it's not, not like in that particular, like, train, but it's, it's a similar sort of yay, I suppose. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> you want to give it another stab or do you want to know what it is no i want to know what it is okay is that is that unanimous yes yes okay uh circular economy says ChatGPT, is a system of economic development that aims to reduce waste and pollution by keeping materials in use for as long as possible and creating a closed loop system of resource use. It focuses on recycling, reusing, and repairing materials rather than discarding them and extracting new resources. Now, see, here's the thing. This is a great idea that some corporation has adopted and slapped a new name on. They've they've co-opted for their own nefarious purposes. I'm, I'm still calling BS. They've co-opted, reuse, reduce, reuse, close the loop. Essentially. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's interesting see. because is there a date? Because I just feel like hmm. It's it's from like the 2000s. So many, it's like oh my household, my household employs the idea of circular. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Um, bu- 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 bu. It, as early as 1966, Kenneth Boulding raised awareness of an open economy with unlimited input resources and output sinks in contrast with a closed economy in which resources and sinks are tied and remain as long as possible as part of the economy. The Boulding's essay, The Economics of Coming Spaceship Earth, that sounds fascinating, uh, is often cited as the first expression of the circular economy, although he does not use that phrase. That's kind so of interesting when it's, something's attributed to someone, but they haven't actually used the phrase. Yeah. <laughs> well, he came up with the idea, but he didn't use that particular combination of words. Uh-huh. Did either of you take, like, economics and mm-hmm. any schooling? I yeah. mean, I had an economics class uh, in high school. Uh-huh. I have to tell you about the economics class I had in high school because it was – in did you watch did you watch trading spaces as as part of the class? No. This guy that was teaching, trading had places? Been teaching trading it places? for a hundred years, maybe. Maybe even longer. I don't know. And I can't remember his name right now. And I should message someone that I know from high school. I don't know anybody from high school. In any case, and this circles circles back in circular economy right. for our yes. previous topic of it how does. to make friends. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't follow my lead. Um he did the same basically the same course every year and there were no exams basically mm. he gave a lecture and you took notes and you turn, turn in your notes and he graded your notes well and that was it so it's like okay and everybody knew coming into it that this was a hard class but the thing he was teaching was like it was fine the lectures were whatever they were boring but you took notes and blah 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 and about every other friday instead of uh, doing that we would dance because he liked like ballroom dancing so he would play music and he would teach dancing like in a not creepy sort of way like in a very normal sort of I mean, I <laughs> in a not creepy way sort of like way. like yeah. the normal way that you teach ballroom dancing to a room full of high well, school i kids. just mean like because he was a school teacher and there's very much like an imbalance yeah. in relationship there and it could have been absolutely creepy like the science teacher down the hall and it was not like that that's all i'm saying um, My economics uh, teacher was very much a creeper, so I have no context for an economics teacher out, that is not creepy. Somebody along the way 
every year would have a copy of the notes that got a hundred percent. Oh no. He always use the same one. And so this was this like gray market economy that took place. Circular economy. Where, where people were like recycling. Yes. The, and so the you previous take a copy of the notes. notes. Well, no, maybe not the circular portion because somebody would get like, I don't know, you'd get like a copy of a copy of a copy and some people would, would you would charge for it or you'd trade favors or <laughs> whatever. I, mean, I don't mean like that, but you know, you would like, you know, in, in this economy existed like can i get a can i get a copy of the economic notes for mr what's his face's class like this week like sure and you'd get a copy and then you you'd hand write your own and in some cases it was honest to god a total plagiarism the previous notes he did not care i'm like convinced now in hindsight that he was showing us how the economy works while all this bullshit was <laughs> he was lectures. the one leaking the I'm, I'm 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 pretty convinced that was the case that he would like leave a copy laying out in some you know, an in industrious student would be like, oh, hell yeah, and that would be it. But yes. Um, so you could, basically, the thing was, it, very few people failed the course because he didn't take attendance. You just had to turn in these notes on his lectures. So once you get to the point where you were like, oh, I don't actually show up for class. I just need to make sure I know who to get notes from. <laughs> but then you also needed to have like backup suppliers in case that person was sick or it was, so it was this it, whole. It really is a lesson in econ economics. And, yeah. and it took me years to realize that because I was at the time I was like, this is so dumb. Like nobody's learning anything in this class. All we're doing is copying notes. And now 20 years later, I'm like, that man was a genius. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, That's the only thing I remember from my, the two things I remember from my economics class, uh, one is that we were supposed to pick a stock or stocks uh, and basically track mm. it, uh, and uh, and the the person who picked had the best performing stock was the winner. Basically, it was some stupid competitive thing, uh, mm. and I think I picked like Cisco or something, and yeah. it it was not doing particularly well. But my theory was that like, oh, it's a tech stock, and it's a thing a thing that I know, so surely that will just continue to go up, and it didn't. Um, the second thing I remember from my economics class, uh, and really the only thing that has had a lasting impact, other than the fact that uh, the teacher sexually harassed his female students, uh, was that we watched, uh, and every year he would watch, uh, he would put on for the class, uh, the movie Trading Places with Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy. Uh, yeah. And if you don't, if you're not familiar with the movie, uh, it's not a bad movie. Um, it's probably dated. I haven't watched it in probably the amount of time that it's been since I've been in that class. Um, but it's, it's basically about these wall street stockbrokers, uh, who are super hotshot and make a bet that any, with the idea, I think the theory is, is similar to, you know, if you, if you have a room full of, of monkeys, eventually they'll write, uh, and you give them typewriters, eventually they'll write Hamlet. It's a similar sort of thing where they like the the concept and, and now as i'm i'm thinking about this this is incredibly offensive and racist uh but the assumption was, so eddie murphy played a homeless person um like you do uh when you're black and in hollywood uh and um uh the the uh the joke was that they were they're going to have a bet and i think the bet was for like two dollars that they could take this random schmo off the literal street teach them basic economics theory and uh, and turn them into a successful stockbroker. Um, it was like it a she's all that, but business. Yeah. And, and, and the other, and, and then the, 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 the opposite was true as well. Like there is Dan Aykroyd played like his opposite, wherein like they could turn a successful stockbroker into a homeless wretch. Um, and there's these two like business leaders that were just basically manipulating people's lives uh, and and like training up the one dude and like putting down the other dude. And in the end, they do. They they swap places and Eddie Murphy becomes a successful dude and Dan Aykroyd becomes like a homeless slob. And and then I think at some point they 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 realize and they realize that the um, that that the two guys bet their livelihoods for two dollars uh, and then they like do the same thing for them or something. Um, so, uh, yeah, really racist, uh, as I think about it <laughs> and, um, but it, it like, like it, it, I don't know. I don't even remember any of the economic stuff out of it. I just remember like the, the Eddie Murphy and Dan. It sounds Aykroyd like you got the basic uh, principles though, that yeah. 
people at the top can manipulate whoever they want. Whatever. Yeah, I mean, that's, 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 that's the takeaway, right? Yeah, I mean, that, seemed, that to me seems like you got the message. Yes, <laughs> yes. That's similar to my economics course. The course content was not the message. Um, I feel like that's a good segue to Gary's stock tips of the week. Uh, right? Excellent, excellent segue to Gary's stock tips of the week. Congratulations, you've done it. If you've been listening for a while, this is the first time we have segued. Dun, dun, dun. We need like yeah. a... A yeah, segue? A bumper, a bumper, yeah. <laughs> For the Gary one time you've done it. stock tips on binary jazz. Oh, yeah, that. <laughs> um, it's a very simple one this week. Since the waters have been choppy, since SVB failed, stay invested. Silicon Don't Valley panic. Bank. Don't take your money out. Stop looking at it every day. It's your retirement anyway. Just check it in a month or two. Relax. It's all going to be fine. The choppy waters now have no impact on where you'll be in five years or ten years. On, on that note, I saw a, a thing pop up. I, I happened to be browsing LinkedIn for some bizarre fucking reason. And Ugh. someone posted this things. this picture of like uh, a card like it, from like the, the 18 or 1900s that like basically in it, and, and there's a story behind this, but it basically showed like uh, years of, of like profit and decline uh like in a very predictable graph and when you should like buy versus sell um and like there's like a a cycle right um and and it basically said that uh, one of the things it said was in 2019 we'd be at a peak and now here we are in 2023 and we're at a low point on this chart which is you know obviously a fascinating thing and there's other things that correlated to like world war ii was in there somewhere and like mm. and this was written in the eight, late 1800s um so i guess the story behind this thing is it was written in the late 1800s by a farmer who didn't know jack shit about the economy um but who did know like crops and 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 the and and and, and cycles seasons and things uh and basically wrote this you know you know, out of his ass, uh, but it happened to just align with, you know, basic economic patterns, right? Um, so it's it's basically bullshit, but it's funny that it actually like aligns with, you know, potentially reality. So what I would actually say is that uh, to, to, to tag on to the end of Gary's stock tips is that like, if you are in a position where you're not completely financially screwed and can potentially event, invest in stuff, now's the time to fucking do it because it is going to bounce back eventually. Um, and I mean, everything always does it. And, and you want to, you know, it's the whole, you know, buy low, sell high, et cetera. Like you want to, yeah, you want to do it that now. That works like if that's your job, yeah. but if like, you're trying to build like an, like a little bit for retirement, like you don't have to be like, so you don't have to be on top of it. Roast in yeah. like what's happening at a micro level because you only care about the macro game. There's, I don't remember, I don't remember what his first name is. The founder of Vanguard is somebody Bogle and the, his like phrase was like, you don't have to beat the market. You just have to be the market. So just stay invested, like pick an index fund and be done and forget about it. So, and I mean, it's not, it's not really far from the truth. If you look at that and you say like, if I just took like an index of the, of all stocks or whatever, like a full stock, full market index, like it's, and look at it over years, like it's not dissimilar from any kind of blend of any other kind of index. It's, it's pretty close to matching. So I, I what for a period of time it takes a lot of the fun out of it for a period course. of time when particularly when we had just got this house and uh were dealing with the very high uh mortgage payments i had paused my my contribution to my investment like mm -hmm. automatic deposit stuff uh and basically my, my takeaway is that like don't pause now if you have the means to to not pause now like pausing later is a better thing um like pausing when we're doing well um as a yeah. as opposed to to pausing when when we're at a low economic point. Yeah, totally totally agreed. Um or if you have to pause now, like reduce for longer term, then pause completely. Like cut it in half for twice as long or what I don't know, whatever. I'm very much a fan of like a little bit every week. Yeah. Like a cup of coffee every week. For a cup of coffee every week, you can invest in the market. <laughs> Ask me how. <laughs> Uh, do you want another in the in the th four minutes yes. that we have? Let's uh, so another thing. So this this is definitely right. not going to come back. 
uh, at all. Um, <coughs> there's one other thing that I, I do like uh, that, or two other things I do like that I might bring back, but uh, among the things that I probably would not bring back uh, <laughs> that are not circular economy, um, uh, mm, pick a number between one and three. Three. Okay. Well, actually, two is the only number between one and three. So. Sure. Transhumanism. <laughs> I don't know. What um, does it sound like? I want to see what Gary comes up with. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I immediately go to like uh, Allison's favorite topic of cryptozoology, right? <laughs> so I'm thinking like, yeah, that's kind of where I go. Uh, transhumanism is uh, the the crossover of human I, but i've also watched a lot of x files so maybe that's part of it too yeah mm. i want to i immediately want to go like alien to human human to yeah. alien mm. the last season the lizard that turns into a person and he's so mad about it <laughs> he's so mad about it. He, it's great i don't know the name of the episode i need to find it after this it is so good it's so funny he's like uh and he's got this british accent and he talks about how he's like he's like yeah suddenly i woke up and i remembered things and it was terrible He's like, <laughs> and I was really excited for a minute, and then I had to go to this job. And I have to do it every day for the rest of my life. Please kill me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like, Mulder's, and, like, apparently this happens to a species, like, once every 180 years or something, and he's, it's, it's hysterical. It's a great episode. The last, the last season when they were, like, trying to close it out, but then they also had to flip in, like, the Monster of the Week stuff, and there was, like, oh, we don't care anymore was like the best like the, the monster of the week there were a lot of like hail mary yeah. type episodes with the writing style of just being like we we what are you gonna do fire me yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah so that's uh, my answer okay uh i think that uh allison might be closer uh trans I... go oh. ahead <laughs> I I I think I know what it is, but I feel like it's not as fun as my real answer. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I I agree. Uh, transhumanism is a philosophy and movement that advocates for the use of technology to enhance human abilities and extend human life. It often involves the use of advanced technologies such as artificial intelligence, biotechnology, and nanotechnology to enhance human cognitive, physical, and sensory capabilities. Yeah, uh, that's something that AI would suggest, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> I mean, I do think – so there was a point at which one of the suggestions was something that I liked that I wanted to like sort of hang on to, and I said, I like this one, but give me more options as well because I already know what this is. And the uh, the topics that it suggested following that were distinctly more sci-fi. Mm. Got it. Got it. So, um, uh, so yeah, that's why. That same season of X Files is the episode where they go out for sushi, and Mulder gets the blobfish, and then the computers, like the well, the AI tries to kill them both, and there's like almost no dialogue. God, that is a great season. <laughs> a, I might just have to watch that season again. It's been so long since I've watched X Files. I don't. What I are don't, you doing? Get I after it. Yeah, Please. I guess. I guess that for, is for the, the benefit of all of us. Like, where where are you watching it? Hulu. Oh. Yeah. Sadly, there's commercials, but... I, I just noticed, I just realized that, that uh, Schitt's Creek 